The mayor of Vancouver delivers the State of the City Address, why he chose Fort Vancouver High School to deliver his most important speech of the year. Plus, an annual tradition rolls down Main Street, Vancouver. Highlights from the Patty Hauk Parade. And students at iTech Prep get out of the classroom. It's more exciting and it's a blast. <laughs> why they're hitting the hallways and downtown Portland. The mayor of Vancouver delivers his State of the City address from his alma mater. Hello and welcome to In the Know, I'm Nick Vole. Mayor Tim Levitt returns to Fort Vancouver High School. In his annual address, he tells Vancouver citizens where their city stands and where it's headed. But the mayor took a look backward as well. Thinking back 25 years ago is a little difficult. In 1989, Tim Levitt was a senior at Fort Vancouver High School. Now, he returns as mayor of Vancouver to deliver the State of the City address. You know what, I love this campus. Uh, every time I come here, it's just, it's very inspiring to feel the energy and learn of the aspirations that the students have. Very similar to what, uh, to the feelings that we had here 25 years ago. CVTV broadcasts the address live on cable and the web as the mayor delivers his speech in Fort Vancouver's auditorium. We are extremely blessed in Vancouver to enjoy top quality schools. It's not the first time he's given a speech at Fort. I actually ran for student class president senior year and gave a, you know, a campaign spiel speech here on stage and uh, I, apparently it wasn't good enough because I lost by like 12 votes. It was heartbreaking. I was crushed. Back then he just wanted to improve his school but didn't necessarily have a bigger plan. Never did I think that I would be the mayor of our city. Um, which, which just, I think, speaks to, um, you know, the realization that you may set your sights on one specific path, but you never know where life is going to take you. Life has taken this former trapper to the highest office in Vancouver, but it all began in the hallways, classrooms, and cafeteria at Fort. Our kind of core group of friends was able to get together at lunchtime you know, from different parts of the school, whatever classes we were in, meet at the lunch table and talk about what was going on. And sure, he's traded in his Def Leppard t-shirt for a suit, but the mayor still holds court at Fort Vancouver, now speaking to local politicians and business leaders instead of his classmates. And these days, the talk isn't about girls, music, and sports. It's about the Columbia River crossing and the role education plays in shaping the future of Vancouver. It sounds like a broken record, but now more than ever, education is so important. and. You know, we're really blessed, as I mentioned in the state of the city here in southwest Washington, with the quality of education that students receive from Vancouver Public Schools and Evergreen School District. No matter where life takes Mayor Tim Levitt next, he'll always have Fort Vancouver High School. I love it. I love coming back. As I mentioned, the TV broadcast was produced by CVTV, the county and city's cable channels. CVTV is the place to go to see city and county meetings and to get other news from around town. It's available on Comcast channels 21 and 23 and also on the city's YouTube page. Students from Fort also made a special greeting for the mayor, which introduced him to the crowd. If you're watching on Comcast, we'll show it to you after this episode. Fort Vancouver gets more visitors as culinary students learn about a potential future in the military. The National Guard brought its mobile kitchen to Fort. Students climbed aboard to learn how military cooks keep the troops fed in times of peace and war. That's a lot of mouths to feed in some pretty difficult circumstances. They also learned about how to turn their passion for cooking into careers. It's, it's letting them know there's, there's hope out there. Not only is there hope, there's a chance to make a good living out there, but it's on them, not on some company. You have to step up to the plate, use your education and those skills and go to work. The culinary arts classes at Ford are part of the district's career and technical education program. Main Street is packed for a spring tradition, the annual Patty Houck Parade. Student reporter Amy Rushforth has more from the parade route. Every year on St. Patrick's Day, the question at the annual Patty Houck Parade is, will it rain? And every year the sun comes out just in time, as if the good cheer from students, teachers and spectators blows away the storm clouds. 
Behind the scenes, participants gather at Haug Elementary, the home base for the parade. And what does this year's parade mean to the Haug community? It's just a way to unify the community and the neighborhood, the city, and the kids. I think it is a great opportunity to, to be together and celebrate Patty Haug. Patty Haug, for whom the parade and school are named, was one of Vancouver's early educators. He believed in building community, a message that resonates with the kids. I think it just is great because it brings us all together as a community and I think that's really great. <laughs> Getting to see all the things that people have worked on making and seeing all the cool things that people have come up with. And of course, there's always the thrill of getting to march in a parade. I think my favorite part would be um, riding the hay wagon. It's my first year, so I'm a little nervous. As bands, students, and old cars roll by, the parade route is lined with future Haug students, taking in the spectacle. Do you want to wish the people at home a happy St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Say happy St. Patrick's Day! Happy St. Patrick's Day! Thank you, sweetheart! For In the Know, this is Amy Rushforth. Thanks, Amy. The VPS TV studio produced a broadcast at the parade so you can see it in its entirety. The special is available on Comcast channels 29 and 328 and also available on the district's YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Middle schoolers at Vancouver iTech Preparatory get out of the classroom. As Amanda Richter reports, a special two-day event uses projects, not lectures, to give students a chance at some in-depth learning. These middle school students at Vancouver iTech Preparatory try to keep eggs from breaking in a drop from the second story. It's part of the school's engineering day. We're trying to challenge like ourselves because this is an engineering school. Students spend the day coming up with solutions to engineering problems and then testing to see if they work. Like I've been wanting to do an engineering challenge. I've just been wanting to solve an engineering problem for a while and now I actually get to apply that. That's the approach at iTech Prep, project-based learning. Students gain knowledge and then demonstrate what they've learned by tackling real-world problems. We like doing these type of things, that's why we came here. And so we get to actually incorporate because we're learning all this engineering stuff in school. And it's kind of fun to actually apply it to like real life and like see how it happens and not just things from textbooks. The students hard at work in the engineering challenge at iTech Prep make up just half of the student body. The other half is in downtown Portland at the Oregon Historical Society. Yeah, right? So this, this, I, the job of they're not only checking out the museum, they're learning from historians and staff members how to create their own exhibits. A museum staff member shows them how to access and handle old newspaper clippings. I just saw a newspaper clipping that was from 1885, so that was really cool. Each group has selected and researched a topic. My group is working on women's rights throughout history. I've learned that they had to do a lot to get to where they are, like they had to go all the way to Washington DC to like state their opinions and how they wanted to have the same rights as men. I think that's really amazing that people would go through all that work to get what they wanted. Next, they learn how to present their findings in their museum style exhibit. I want to include like um, different pr perspectives from multiple people because people think about things di differently. And perhaps the biggest takeaway for the students is the value of history itself. Why is something like that? How did it become that? Mm -hmm. And if you look at the past, you can see footprints to the present. For In the Know, I'm Amanda Richter. Thanks, Amanda. As we mentioned, this was a two-day event. Each half of the student body spent a day engineering and a day at the museum. Young artists from Lakeshore Elementary are honored for a mural. Fifth graders at Lakeshore created a mural for the Winter Wonderland contest. After thousands of votes were cast by the viewing public, the Lakeshore team won first place, netting a $1,000 check for the school's art program. Congratulations to all the students who won. Prom season is just around the corner, and thanks to a program at Hudson's Bay High School, girls from around Vancouver have the chance to shine. The Dreams Coming Alive event offers girls dresses and accessories at rock bottom prices. The items for sale are donated by community members. The program was started a few years ago by Christina Chen, a former Bay student. Her goal was simple, to give girls a chance to go to prom, even if they didn't have hundreds of dollars to spend. 
at the event, it's really cool because girls are like, oh, can you help me? I just don't know if this dress is good enough, you know? And they want to just like wow all their friends and family. And it's just mm -hmm. really cool to see their smiles. The event is set for Saturday, April 19th at Hudson's Bay High School. It goes from noon to 3 p.m. and is open to any student from any high school. Just bring your student ID and $5. And if you can't afford it, you can also apply for a voucher. If you want to donate to the event, there's still time to pass along your gently used dresses and accessories. Just drop them off at the front desk at Hudson's Bay High School. Well, that's about it for us. Thank you for watching In the Know. Until next time, I'm Nick Vole.